Gracias por asistir hoy en este horario tan particular para nosotros. Thank you for joining us on this very special time of the day. We'll try to make it very interactive since we're not too many. As you know, the topic is foundations and sports, non-profits and sports. The impact of and the implication of sports beyond goals and leagues. The participation in other spheres as well to try to keep back to society from football teams. The members of our panel are Yolanda from Athletic Bilbao Foundation and John from Eibar Foundation, mainly, as well as Mr. Um, Gurut Linazzaroso from Real Sociedad Foundation. So they'll share their experiences from each of these foundations and football teams, and then we'll have a space for a Q&A session at the end. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for thinking of Athletic Bilbao's foundation to be part of this panel. And my greetings to my panel companions as well as we've shared other panels. I want to share what our foundation does as part of its corporate social responsibility program. The foundation was created in 2003 and its main goal is to give back to society what the society gives to the club. I truly believe that the Basque people gives a lot to our club, to our foundation, and this is why we have activities, um, social, cultural activities, besides sports ones, of course. The first thing I'd like to share is what we do. So I'll share with you the latest activities we've done, 2014 and 2015 mainly. First of all, our social activities. Football and sports should be an integrating factor of society, it cannot be excluded from it. It needs to be inclusive for society. And this is why our foundation has been working since 2015. And our board and uh, myself as chair of it has focused on working with a series of groups. And our work with these groups has allowed us to work with volunteers, corporate volunteers as well, to be involved with these groups. The first group is homeless people. We work with RISE Foundation. We've been working with 20 homeless people. And we believe in this case, football is a factor for social inclusion. Kuko Siganda, our coach, is also their coach. We also work on the Alegina project with teenagers working on motor, social skills, team working. 
health and hygiene issues as well. We've been working with them since 2012 and some of our um, football players also work with them. We can see Orca Otero, our goalkeeper there. And following this project with teenagers, we have been working with the Basque Adapted Football League and Cup, the F National Football Federation works on this league with the support of other um, football clubs and foundations like the three in this panel. We have about um, 200 people in, in this uh, cup taking part and working on different skills. Um, some of the ones that I've mentioned before, those that we feel are key for this group. Another very important project is the Bakuba Football School. Bakuba Foundation works in an area of Bilbao where there is um, some more social exclusion. We work with 70 children and we focus on discipline issues, um, following rules, team working, etc. These kinds of skills. There are boys and girls up to 14 years old taking part. Children from disadvantaged areas from Lesama. But overall, when they when they are carrying out these activities, they are at the facilities of our foundation, of our own uh, Athletic Bilbao facilities. We also work with uh, at San Mamés at our at the at our stadium, of course. We have a project for people with um, certain mobility limitations. And we work with about 100 people on these. We also have the Vestal de Atsis program, working with inmates, some of them in parole as well. And the goal is to make them feel that they can be back in society and use football as a tool for this. We're working with 10 inmates. We can see here a series of uh, some of our um, Premier League football players joining them. We also work with the mental health network, where a network, I'm sorry, Osaki Vetsa. And we work with people suffering from uh, mental health diseases, mainly adults. We believe that through football and through sports, we can make a difference. We are also working with um, Cruces project on other kinds of social activities, um, especially with the customization of hospital materials for children with um, on the topic of the club. In September, we'll be working with political prisoners, and we also have a, a foreign or open exterior project. The idea is that we not only work with uh, Basque people, but we've been in Honduras and Ethiopia, and we're thinking about what's next then. Cultural activities. 
This is very important for us as well. Besides social activities, which allow us to give back to our society, it's important that our audience, our public is also connected to our own uh, cultural life and inheritance. It's important that those who like football need to think about football from a more uh, cultural perspective as well. And this is um, why we have organized the Thinking Football Film Festival. We've done it over a series of years now. This allows us to work on discrimination, homosexuality, children trafficking, certain social and cultural issues that are related to football as well. And in connection with this festival, We've had a um, award, a recognition in a way given from an LGBT association because we uh, addressed uh, homophobia and homosexuality in football, which is a topic that's not commonly treated either. This was from um, HEWAC Association and then this other project, Berzo Derbia, with Real Sociedad Foundation. This is our classical match. There were about 500 people the last time, uh, very many young people, Corrica supporting culture and the Basque language. And in November, we will have a literature festival. I will share a few videos later. Our foundation works on grassroots sports besides having social and cultural and sports activities. We uh, train doctors, we train um, staff as well. That's other aspect of our work, but uh, today I wanted to focus on these three kinds of activities. Football, Kalin, has um, involved about 500 people. Children uh, love it. I have two brief videos that show a way what Athletic Bilbao Foundation does. This is a reflection on this um, film festival. It shows our values. Foundation that works with kids and stuff like that, and the club seems to be very situated within society, and it's very exceptional. You see it in all the films that are showing here today, and that's very important. That soccer can be used as a tool for social change. I was very surprised to know that a football club organizes a film festival because football certainly is not only a game. It's about uh, bringing people together, uh, fair play, it's about connecting the whole world. It's really great that athletic club thinking uh, globally to bring all the people together in one nice event. It shows that athletic club Bilbao is thinking more about than just winning matches. a chance for the local fans here in Bilbao to see football cultures from across the globe, but it's also great for the filmmakers to be able to come to such a beautiful city. I was here in Bilbao last year, I had a phenomenal time at the festival, so it is a, a huge honor to be back here in this beautiful city uh, with such an amazingly strong football culture. It's a place you immediately feel at home.
There were 2,000 people in this festival this year. This is another video, a different one. My dream is to play at Athletic Bilbao. Who said you were going to win? Now you have to show it. They thought they were going to just have an ordinary training day and then they found the Athletic Bilbao players here. For these children who come from disadvantaged areas, it's a dream come true to have played with these players. They couldn't believe it. They'll never forget it. This shows the values of Athletic Bilbao. This is what we do and I wanted to share the role of volunteers in our work as well. and also the involvement and engagement of staff and football players. Thank you. Vale, mi esquerda Yolanda y del equipo con más temporadas en primera, el equipo vasco con más temporadas en primera al, al recién llegado, como es la Sociedad Deportiva Ibar. Entonces le pasamos la, la palabra a John. Bueno, es que ricasco Jonathan, es que ricasco Gustio y me dijo que te a ti que está bueno, ahí va a tirar el cartel en partes, va es que ricasco. As I see a lot of international faces, also thank you so much for coming here. We are the smallest Basque team and also the smallest team in La Liga, one of the smallest teams in Europe, and it means the world to us for you to be here today. So thank you so much for coming. Por nuestra parte, teníamos una. Perdón. Eh, son las cosas de estar en directo. Entonces, eh, por nuestra parte, bueno, pues deciros eso, muchísimas gracias por venir. So, thank you very much for coming here. As I said, this is one of the smallest clubs. We can start a presentation between these two clubs without speaking about Eibar. What is Eibar? I could tell a lot of things, but not as much compared to Yolanda or Togruz about what we do in our foundation, but I would like to tell you about something, about our recent history, so all of you know know what is Eibar. Eibar. We are the football team from a town, a 27,000 inhabitants town in the very heart of Euskadi, of the Basque country. We are in the bond between Gipuzkoa and Vizcaya. We got nice neighbors, Real and Athletic, and also between Osasuna. So there are a lot of teams here. And last year, we get to get a first division. And we found that there were many teams from our region, our area. So what could we do different? We needed to be different, be different. So that's Eibar. What do you see? That red spot in the middle of a map. 
we are in the very heart of this country of two million people. It's a tiny place in the mountains. When foreign people come to Eibar, they normally say that they think they're in Switzerland. I think I got to stand up, but if you see the downside, the down part of the picture is that the football stadium. If you ever go from Bilbao to Donosti in the road, you will see the stadium from the road. This is kind of a funny thing of my presentation, but that means a continuous fight against everything because we don't have a space for anything. I'm from Bilbao. I admire the fact that in San Mames or in Anoeta they got a plenty of room, but we don't. And this is a small town. We have, for example, just one cinema. And the fronton, the ball player field. And 27,000 people, as I said. But even though we can do many things. And I've written this in English because we got we become famous because before arriving to the first division we needed a million seven hundred thousand euros this team has 75 years of history without any debt we've always had money and we have to thank also our communication department so many people many foreign people but stake uh, that means we got more than 50,000 stakeholders from all over the world which is amazing for a 27,000 people town and foundation was the first in buying shares and that foundation found his place of course doing activities with children but what made us different is that we become a really complete department that does different things but there's not a lot of of, of bureaus we're just 10 people and if we have ever to organize a conference or anything, foundation deals with it. And it works. It works really fast. And as I'm sometimes envy different foundations, I don't miss that. I'm lucky. I can stand up from my desk and I knock on the president's door. It's so easy. It's as easy as that. What else can we tell about this activity? As I said, we got a problem with the space in Eibar. Uh, we got, for example, a stadium with more than 50,000 seats, Anoeta, 32,000. Ours has 5,000. It's a town stadium. It's from the 70s. The basement is from the 40s. And here the foundation played an important role in thinking or rethinking what kind of a stadium do we want? What do we want to go? And what can we do with the most important building from the last years? So where, whereas other clubs think about doing malls, hotels, big restaurants, we cannot think about that because we don't have enough space. So what the foundation does is thinking about an alternative model which can work in neighbor. Well, there's the space is scarce, so we cannot build a hotel. So what can work? What can we give back? So people have spent 2 million euros in share, so we have to give them back something. So what we create is a strategic theory project, the Ipuru Atallara, from Euskera. 
So Aver people even have a different way to say that tallara, that that Basque word. That means uh, the workshop. So we want our stadium to be a part of that spirit, that Basque gene of the work of industriality. And that Iburua Tallarra is the way that we're going to try to expand that stadium and make something bigger happen. Our stadium is divided in four areas, each one of them a different. The basement of those foundations were from the 40s, where the rest of the civil wars actually, yeah, we can talk about, for example, Guernica, which was bomber in the civil war. And in Eibar, with all the remaining from those bombs, we took that material and we made a purua. So when we thought to renew the refurbish the stadium, we realized that we had no basement. We had the remainings of bombings. So besides the basic needs of a club, like having a shop, having a small restaurant. We want to have something other clubs don't. And what we're going to have is two classrooms, and maybe more in the future. Thus, we want to create that different we want to become through formation, through training, with young people and related to sport. We have an arrangement with País Vasco University, with Swansea University in Wales. And through all of this, we want to implement some training courses from the next season, starting in October. So what we want to have is official courses of trainer, coach, goalkeepers, some other courses along with universities. For example, someone who is with Atletico de Bilbao can have a bas uh, master degree, but someone in a smaller group has not access to such a knowledge. But that's what we can help. If we can arrange uh, courses with a first division trainer, first division doctor, or for example, the rehabilitators, doctor rehabilitators in first division. And we would also like to create a master, professionalizing master in the sports world. That's like what happens in Wembley, the University of Buckinghamshire, where they have a master, it's a mix like economy, business management, and sports manager. Because we think that if you have been 65 years with money without that, we may have something to show the rest of the world. And that's our strategic plan which we hope from October on we'll be able to share those goals. Now our stadium has around 5,000 as we said. We don't even have the minimum for a second division club. We, and we will never reach the first division requirements which are 20,000 people, but we'll do our best. And what can be better than young people learning about football? But not in a university, but in a football stadium. And they can do the practice on the field. As we, as we already said, we talk about social inclusion. That project is a really nice way to in work on that inclusion project. If someone is playing football, it's not outside, it's not doing anything. And this is a small example. Yolanda already talked about that. In our case, February 28th, we played against the Athletic Club. And from the lesbian, gays, transsexuals, and bisexuals, they proposed us to use a places uh, rainbow laces so we can show 
our feeling for that. And that meant that we opened the news because we receive a, a prize after doing that. Yeah, just happened just last week. So we won games, we lost games, we won the second division, we won the first, and we never appeared on TV. We found the key. The social inclusion through football, speaking something, speaking about something so weird as social equities, like defending a new model of society far away from machoism, and that made us appear on TV. So when we call about Eibar model, it's not only about just the book we just published, because a different football is possible. And it has worked so far. Thank you very much. Thank you, John, for your experience. Now we give the floor to Gurut, representing Real Sociedad Foundation. A pioneer in working with youth in this, uh, in this uh, field. Thank you, Leon. First of all, I'd like to thank the invitation from the organizers. It's a pleasure and a luxury, a personal luxury, to share the panel with Eibar um, and our colleagues from Bilbao. As a football fan, although my professional field is not sports, I am amazed at the envy that people feel because we, um, because our classic matches are um, always, you know, go very well. And in a way, this has to do with the philosophy and the values that each club has, based on fair play and because we focus on the people beyond players. We focus on the person. There are several ways to understand football and sports. It can be a game, passion, leisure, a show, even business. We can see these on the headlines of uh, main mass media. But we will never hit the headlines, really, because our football is different. Usually individuals are the ones that are recognized. And this is why Real Sociedad Foundation, about three, four years ago, decided to differentiate itself through education. And this is why we have focused on education. Sports allows us uh, to share values, uh, to train on healthy habits. It's a tool for social integration. And this is done through education, through training, and through inclusion. We've been very active in school football. Uh, we've done this over the last three years. We've trained about 700 football coordinators in about 91 schools in Gipuzkoa. And each one of them trains or coaches two teams. And this means that we reach 1,500 teams from different sports. A six, seven year old cannot focus on sport, uh, on football, I'm sorry, alone. He or she needs to consider other sports as well, and this is what we're trying to do. 
We share Real Sociedad's methodology when training football players. When we are training these sports coordinators, and this is a way to give back to the Guipuzcoa society. We also have a joint venture with the Adapted Sports Federation to promote inclusion, the inclusion of people with special needs or maybe mobility limitations. Players um, play together regardless of their physical limitations or capabilities. When someone without these problems has to uh, play a game, a match uh, on a wheelchair, then he or she realizes and understands the issues this is something that we've, uh, these kinds of matches are something that we've done with um, other organizations like uh, Foundation or ANSE, for example. This contributes to facing um, other problems or if there are any physical limitations later on, then uh, it's possible to uh, overcome them better. We need to make sure that Zubieta is not a field of frustration. We need to understand that one Chill, one, um, one person, one kid in 3,000 will actually make it to become a professional football player. This is why we stress the fact that we train people. We focus on the person, on the values. There's an emotional intelligence training program we focus on a healthy eating habits. There's a strong interaction among all of these areas. The idea is that kids really enjoy their training, that they feel that this is a privilege for them to be training at our facilities, and this is why they need to feel the as the um, main characters in a way of this process. We want to make sure that uh, in minor leagues, children play between 35 and 50 percent of the time. We've um, been in uh, children's uh, leagues, in minor leagues, and some trainers and some clubs don't understand why we change so much. And this is because we follow the statistics to the core. Overcoming difficulties and uh, putting into practice efforts are our two main values among all of this. Failure is not to put effort into something. And this is why we are we focus on these very important triangle, family at the center of it. Uh, we also work closely with the kids' school. Discipline, the attitude, classes or an ex a school excursion or outing, this is always more important than football training. It's very difficult to achieve, but this is what we uh, do. There were two other slides. I'm sorry, this might be um, 
an old version because I wanted to talk about another program on health sciences and football, focusing on cardiology, physiology, and mind and football, addressing decision-making in football on the one hand, and on the other hand, um, head uh, injuries or problems that may arise. That was all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So after the three expositions, we give you the word in case you want to ask any question, any comment. Comment of Mike. As I said, thank you very much to, to all of you. I got a short question. Do you think that because of the limited situation we live now in an economic way, being able to play without the ball, what do you do between match, between games? It is, is it more important now? It's the best moment now for foundations. I'll talk about our foundation. I don't know if now we are under scrutiny now, but we're doing what we wanted to do. So our work is on day by day to reach in the people I talked about in my presentation, all besides the spot project. But we still want to give some answer we, to help those people in need. I don't know if that's more important right now in a crisis, economical crisis framework. Most of the people here in the room, the people here in this city, most of them don't even know the activities we are doing. Maybe because our fault is our communication. So I don't know if we are under scrutiny right now. I think we do have to work. We have to give answer to the needs and everything we can help in as a foundation. We really think a crisis is an opportunity, at least from our side in a European country, social security, but we do really think it's an opportunity. And even more important now is the moment, not only because of that giving back to society that Yolanda talked about, but also the traction effect of the foundation. Because in a crisis, economic crisis moment now, most of the sponsor cannot do sport sponsorship, but if you show them that you are out in the streets or the public system doesn't work and you help society, those sponsors, they see that as an opportunity to give you money that they may wouldn't give you in a different way. So that's a never-ending circle. And we show the players that, that if they go to social events, you become a social celebrity. I think that sponsorship role and the player role, it's really important for society. Yeah, I completely agree. I would say that fo football 
as a media power so big that we have to do all the things foundations do. I think we've got a great opportunity and we can give a lot, sometimes economically, but most of times don't. So we got to keep going. And this helps us, it gives us a really important feedback so that we can use then with our kids. We cannot live isolated. We can create networks with society and with needed people, needed part of society. If you allow me, I'll speak about what happened a week ago. We got the meeting, a foundation meeting, and players, coaches, everybody in Lezama, even those who participate as a volunteer, and everybody says the same. The best day is the one they work with disabled people, people in risk of social exclusion. So the work which is done by the people from the club is really, really important. It may or may not be public because we are training people, not only sportsmen. As I already know the, the athletic club, I would, uh, I would have a question for Guruz and John. What kind of activities and relationship you got with your clubs? So you give them training, you do kind of surveillance, what kind of relations? Thank you very much. Yeah, everything you just said. Because what we try to do with all the clubs, we had our relation, it's to implement Real Sociedad policy so that they can do all we do in Zubieta. So, yes, we got a really close bond with all those clubs. We, we got our arrangements. By our side, I would say, yeah, the panorama, this, the view is completely different. The case of Real Sociedad, Litvia Bilbao, the historical here in the first division, but our challenge is completely different. It's how do we face that first division in 75 years having different teams? It's the first time we got a, our second team. So how can we face this challenge? How, how can we improve it? But we all know stories from people that get to first division and they disappear. So we don't want that. So our relation with the different clubs, we got some arrangement. Yeah, we got some economical arrangement. But what we find more interesting is that they can be ambassadors of the Avar brand. And they can show our way to thinking things. And how important for us is the sport, but also training people, training in values. And that the fact is a sport victory without education, without humanity, effort, doesn't mean anything. So we work in that just getting better and better. I would like to know your opinion. I work at a school with girls here in Vizcaya. None of them is going to go to Athletic because we don't have a football team. But after your experience with kids and how first league players give power to those kids and disabled people play, for example, so when you organize a educational activity, which one could I do first? My students to be with disabled people, I tr should I try to invite Athletic de Bilbao to work with my students? So what do you think? What should I do first for her to be much more motivated and face the future? 
sabéis que a unos chiquillos igual es por la edad, ¿eh? igual... What do you think? I would say the easier impact is just having other Bilbao players going to your school. They would feel amazed. But probably what can be better is just the other. So they can learn more things if they work with, if they play with disabled people. I think that that depends on the goal you want to get. But please don't think girls cannot reach Athletic or Real Sociedad team. Athletic Club female team exists as a really 10 years. No, I was saying that in our reality, our students cannot go to Atletico Bilbao. Yeah, but women like more and more football, and we are much more working into football. But yes, what what Wood says, I completely agree, and we cannot forget that in all our first teams, we got some female main players because we normally think about the more mediatic players but we get also to think about female players yes, we can also have to work about what female so female football means I like the questions about female so football because from our point of view, as a director of the Eibar Foundation, it's sometimes difficult because of feedback we got. We got a female football team that recently got to first division. It's a really good team. That gives us a vision. Because since now, we got a female team, but now we decided to make them equal. The first league boys team and the first girls, the first team girls team equals. Now we have the different divisions, the regional divisions, and then we have the female. Now we are separating, we are splitting everything, male and female. We have sometimes talk about talk that the Eibar was the first team having a female doctor in the first division, and she says that when the referee says the game is over, she is the only girl staying in the in the stadium. But every time we went to talk to students, she says that she has to hear a lot of bad words. But what she thinks is, what can I do to change this next time I go to a classroom? And what can I teach the students? And about organizing activities. Of course, yeah. A first division team going to a school, that's priceless, of course. Yeah, but, and those activities are great, but if you want to get them, focus in a prior and a post reflection. So what can we do? How can we do? And after the activity, what have we learned and what can we do and how can we use it? Not only a game in the field, not only a game in the stadium, but what can we do with that? Any more questions? Then I'm going to talk. Yeah, I'm going to give myself a word. We've talked about the foundation, our chances. We had, we've, we've watched a video of the first league players. But how it really... How involved are players? We've seen in some events the football, male or female players, 
being part of some events. But I want to know, how involved are them in the foundations? Is it only a decision of the board? Oh, it's a personal decision. They do want to get involved with foundations. We are not Barcelona, we are not Madrid, and we don't live in Moraleja and nothing like that. We're talking about players that maybe stars and really good players, but they're not world-known stars. Yeah, I do think they're involved. And you sometimes chat to them, and what they say is, you should bring us to these activities much more than you do. But the problem is that some of these activities, they are done by weekends, and that's, that makes everything difficult because players are playing. But yet, yeah, they do want to get involved with foundations. And I think I, my, my colleagues here, they will think the same as I do. Yeah, they're really aware and how privileged are them and in giving back to society. Yeah, for us it's very important, the involvement from the club. And since 2011, this board of directors started, we wanted to go farther in some activities. Yeah, and there's a voluntary corporate activity, not only players, but coaches and club staff. They, they got involved in these kinds of programs. And what I'm going to say is not different from what Guru said. Many of the, our players, they participate with Ian Joes, and they're not seeking for just publicity. Because they're players, they're, some of them maybe are rich, but they're involved people. Yeah, because they don't live in a really nice area, but in our area, I would say our players are really, really, really involved people not only through the club, but also personally. Yeah, I would say it happens almost the same in our case. Our players are, are really important. Every time they do something social, it's much better. In Avery, it's easier sometimes, but difficult some others. For example, I'll... I live in a rented flat and I got a player in the apartment upstairs and downstairs. That can seem funny, but thing renting prices are completely normal. And that gives our players a dimension of what happened, because even if they are getting first division money, we would say, they are really aware of what happens, that they're normal, regular people. In a case like this one, they don't live in a privileged side. No, they live in the center of Eibar. And they're really aware of that. We sometimes got that fight. And we got to educate them in how important it would be for society, their involvement. Because as what we talked about, this is this make them better person, make them better players. They get, the more they get involved, the better they will feel, and they will be seen in society. So that's our constant struggle. When the team travels, they cannot go anywhere and they are tired, but by the end of the season, then you realize that what you've always been trying to do has worked, has been meaningful. 
I don't want to say goodbye without thanking you, your effort for being here and for your work to improve our society. Thank you very much.